after all the transfer drama with Victor Osime, simultaneously, um, the Nigeria Football Federation said, how can Osime be hugging the spotlight? You know, they also needed to get into, into, the, into the action a little bit. And I don't know, you know, if, if this was England, yeah, it will probably, will probably be saying, wow, this is the most embarrassing thing. But because it's Nigeria, like, it's embarrassing, you know, but I feel like we've seen worse. It's normal. <laughs> you know, normal. It's, it's, it's kind of what we would, uh, what we would expect. And, you know, because this is a topic that I know my friend um, has a lot of knowledge on, I'll bring him on now. Smilai, welcome. Ah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear you. Thank you for actually what having me again. Nice to see you. Yes. Thank you for bringing um, me again. It's nice to see you. You know, I wish we had something nicer to discuss today. Um, but yes, the Super Eagles, the NFF, they didn't want to be left out of the drama. Um, yeah. as Mutlai, I'll let you go first on this one. But just to give people context, three days ago, the NFF announced German tactician Bruno Lavadia as the new head coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Um, you know, they announced this. We said, ah, I've, you know, even me, I said, why are they doing like vigilantes? Why are they announcing this thing in the, in, the, in the dark hours when everybody's asleep? But they made the announcement. We said, okay, fine, Bruno Labadia. We came on this show, you know, we finished breaking everything down. They've made me go and study. I went to go and do research about all his tactics, about everything about him. They just wasted my time, wasted everybody's time, you know? And then all of a sudden, we're hearing reports from Germany today that, ah, Labadia said he's not doing again, no. Contracts have stalled. Talks have stalled. Then the NFF came out with a report of their own. And let me just quickly read what they said um, in their statement to explain what happened. So they said, mm -hmm. um, stringent regulations of German tax authorities have conspired to abort the agreement between the NFF and coach Bruno Labadia for the latter to mount the saddle as head coach of the Nigerian senior men's team, Super Eagles. Sorry, before I read the rest of the statement, I don't know if it's A.Y. Sugar or Ademola Ajire that writes this statement, but the, the use of words to try to make it sound uh, more, I don't know whether it's yeah. fast or what, what, which one is uh, German tax authorities have conspired to abort the agreement? As if, as, as if after the German tax people saw that Nigeria wants to hire a coach, they went to go and make some new law. Yeah, yeah let's let's block the move. for Nigeria. Then they now said uh, for the latter to mount the saddle as the head coach of the Super Eagles. What was all this grammar for for failure? They now said, okay, we have been on this tax issue for the past three days, and I told him clearly that there was no way the NFF will agree to offset the concomitant tax percentage. Um, on his salary that was demanded by German tax authorities. It is not possible for us to cover, to shoulder the responsibility of shelling out another money between 32 to 40% of his salary after paying the agreed monthly wage. The NFF and Mr. Labadia reached an agreement in principle before we made the announcement that he would become the head coach of the Super Eagles. The tax details were never part of the discussions and he had personally agreed to all terms before the tax issue came up. We were doing our best to be flexible in the discussions, but it was adamant that the NFF had to pay the full tax amount as well. We simply cannot do that. President of NFF, Ibrahim Musa Duso. Um, so, Smitlai, when we spoke about this coach, Smitlai said it, that IOT, until the coach himself confirms this appointment, <laughs> I'm not going to believe. Smitlai said it. And just like you called, that the coach will probably not confirm this appointment and Eguavon will take over. That's exactly as it happened. If you start watching, you people are supposed to, are supposed to donate five, five pounds to Simitlai because that was very prophetic. So Simitlai, when you saw the news today, you know, what, what, what were your thoughts and how are you feeling about this whole situation? You know, I, I've never felt that uh, Labadia will be Nigerian coach. You know, I told you, I said that uh, it's a script. And, you know, we can't be sleeping and be sleeping and be facing one side. At least, you know, I know, you know, you, you said that uh, I don't trust the NFL. In fact, I'm like to you, I just even finished talking to one of the officials too, you know, you, you, you won't just mention, he called me prophet of doom. That, 
<laughs> I'm the one that's doing the appointment. I said, no, it's a script. How can you come and say, here we go? There's no contract. Hmm. There's no, there's nothing between you. You, the channels TV called the NFF to ask them, ah, this coach you are want, want to play. Can you just give us more about him? Nobody is speaking. Hmm. So, you know exactly what they are trying to do. They're just trying to throw this coach to our face. But he said, Governor is the coach. I've been hearing that, uh, you know, he's already trying to pick assistants, you know? So the issue is this. I, I, I am not surprised that we are not uh, going with Labadia. For me, I think it's a script. I think uh, the NFF is more of like a politics than um, than football. So, and we're going to continue like this. I can tell you. I wasn't surprised at all. That's why I said that, uh, you know, that uh, we'll continue like this. Hmm. Okay. Um, Olu, I'll jump to you. Um, how, you know, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts on this whole situation? I mean, thank God for Smith lies like inside our knowledge because, I mean, all I can say is wow. But at the same time, what does wow mean? Not, not, nothing is ever shocking. Like, there's no, there's no depth. There's nothing so beneath. There's no, there's nothing below the ground that the NFF cannot reach further down to surpass in terms of failure or being useless. Like, it's just disgrace after disgrace after disgrace after disgrace. And I'm sorry, we're not asking for the, the sun, um, pearls and diamonds and gold. We just ask for the basics. We have a very good team. We're the most populous country in Africa. Just represent us well and give us a very good team and give them the facilities they need to shine. Simple. And get out of the way. And they can never do it. And yet, if you need to reside, they did not announce. The one, the time they should have announced something quick, they did not announce it quick. The one that they should now wait till they have information before announcing is the one that they now announced, like you said, uh, in the middle of the night, as if they're trying to like tell the manager, gotcha, who we've announced you, we've announced that you're our coach. Now you have to sign for us. Duh. Do they think that uh, Labadia is in Nigeria where everybody will say, yes, sir. You are older than me. Ah, I respect your authority, sir. Ah, he's not a grown man that can think for himself. And you announced that he's you announced that as your coach. Do you know the worst part, bro? They wrote with immediate effects. What can we say? What can we say? What can we say? What can we say? No. See, so, yeah, this whole thing, you know, Labadia. To the NFF, you know, deal has collapsed. It is so, so, so hilarious to me, man. One, because Smithly called it, and when when I saw the whole thing collapsing, I was just like, wow. I sent message to Smithly. I said, Smithly, you know these NFF people too well. <laughs> See, two, the explanation that they are giving us, mm -hmm. I think it only adds insults to the injury that they've already <laughs> dealt to Nigerians and oh, Nigerian football fans. Mm -hmm. Like, we know you guys are incompetent. We already know. Mm -hmm. We know you guys do anyhow. We know. Mm -hmm. But at least, see, I would rather they did not even explain. Just tell us, Eguavo is the coach. The deal mm -hmm. with Labadia did not happen. Than to come and try to save face with a very silly statement. You say the tax authorities conspired. Who, like, you think the German tax authorities give a damn about you that much that, oh, Nigeria is going to hire this guy. So let us, let us do something to block the move. Secondly, you said you've let him know about they are not paying this for the past three days and he was insistent on it. Anybody that has a brain knows that these are things that you discuss before anything happens, before any announcement is made. You cannot announce and then later now say, oh, by the way, that tax that your country is asking you to pay, we're not going to pay it all. You have to pay it by yourself. My assumption is that they were not aware of that tax. Honestly, that's my assumption. And the man probably informed them about it after. And that, again, only speaks to the incompetence of the people that run our football. Because if you are going to hire somebody from a particular region, or whatever the case may be, if there's, like, for example, if a foreign company wants to hire a worker, let's say somebody in England wants to hire a worker from Nigeria, they already know, okay, we're going to have to sponsor this person's work visa. It mm -hmm. comes with fees. It comes with all these issues. You cannot hire the person 
agree contract, they now come and say, oh, by the way, oh, you have to pay for your work visa by yourself. You have to, you get, it, it just does not make sense. These are things that you would have done your due diligence. You would have known that you need to sort out and you would have made plans for how everything will be sorted out. If you were not going to pay this tax, this is something that you would have told the person up front. With the same example I used, there's companies that if they want to hire a foreign worker, they will, from the get-go, they will ask you, Relocation. do you have, do you have um, authorization to work? If you don't, we cannot pay for your authorization. So if you don't have authorization, from the get-go, you know that they're not going to hire you. Again, it only speaks to the incompetence because it is only the NFF that I've seen that they've not yet signed an agreement. Pen has not been put on paper and they will come and publicize, make an official announcement. Oh, 37th head coach of the Super Eagles. Make pronouncements. Allow everybody to carry it when you have not put pen on paper. It is embarrassing. It is incompetent. Like, I don't understand how in 2024, this is how we still run football. The biggest sports in Nigeria. In fact, the only sports that they actually take yeah. somewhat seriously in Nigeria. This is how we are still running it in 2024. It is a shame. And then the people that are responsible for this, oh, nothing happens. They make silly statements like this, like, oh, um, German tax authority conspired against you, and then everybody's life goes on. It is, it is sad that this thing keeps happening, man. How do you not know about everything that you need to do before you hire this guy? How is this not the conversation that you've had already? And if you've not had the conversation, like, let's be realistic. If truly, if truly the tax is 40% or 32 to 40% of his salary that you agreed, how did you imagine that he would pay that money by himself? Let's be realistic. Like, if they hire any of us for a job, and they say there's an additional tax of 40% of your wage that you have to pay. You now say, oh, don't worry, my employer, I got you. I'll be covering the tax. Let us be realistic. Nobody will do that. When we know that the way they run the NFF, they will probably tell him to pay his assistants out of that money that they are paying him. You know, if he wants to get match analysts and all these other things, they will probably make him pay out of pocket. But you still think that he's going to somehow agree to pay a 32% tax. It is just gross incompetence. You know, Smith Lai, unfortunately, you're not you're not the prophet of doom. Yeah. You're just somebody that you know how these people operate, you know that they don't operate well, and you can see these things coming. Some yeah. of us, people like me, we always, you know, I guess I always like to see I'm a half glass full, I'm, um, I'm a glass half full rather type of person. I always like to see the positive and to expect that maybe things will be good. Mm -hmm. But these people have shown us time and time again that no matter how much we believe in them, no matter how much faith we have, they just cannot get things right. Has there been a Nigerian coach that they've hired in recent times that did not come with drama? Has there been one? Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. understand why we cannot get these things right. I'm looking at the statement. I can't believe it. I, like, don't I, understand. I can't believe they put this out. Honestly, it's like I... You know, I, I, used to, I used to be on the NFF's case a lot in the past. To the point that they blocked me on all social media. They, they used to talk bad about me. In fact, one of the, uh, the person that I think you spoke to at some point was telling people that he will get boys to beat me. This, yeah. is, a real, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is a real thing, you know, because I used to call them out a lot. At some point, they said they will get boys to beat me, everything. But, okay, like Mikel Obi said, do your job and I will shut up. I'm telling Just you. Just do your job and I will shut up. I if, you are doing your, if you are doing your job well, I don't have anything to come and criticize. I don't have anything negative to say about you. But they cannot just do their job. And like you said, I'm not asking for much. I'm not asking you to be the best organization in the world. Just the very, very basic things. In mm -hmm. fact, my standard has dropped so low. All I'm asking for is don't <laughs> embarrass us. That's all I'm asking for right now. Just don't <laughs> embarrass us. And they cannot do that simple thing of yeah. not embarrassing us. Um, yeah. It's a very big failure. Um, it is embarrassing, but of course, Nigeria, in all aspects, whether in sports, whether in anything else, our, our leaders, they, they get gingered by embarrassments. Like, they, they need to be shamed. It's like a kink that they have. They want people to shame them. They want the world to shame them. And they feel, I don't know if they feel joy 
when it happened. It was part that guy putting that statement out there. He was probably thinking because they are surrounded by yes men and clearly no yeah. professionals. Oh, they are trying to slander the name of the NFF. Let's write that we it was the tax law. Or Gusso the, didn't, see, was, another thing is Gusso didn't write these statements. Gusso didn't write these statements. Gusso doesn't speak English as well as this. You know, mm -hmm. the reality of it is that <laughs> the communications director probably wrote the statement and maybe showed it to his boss, like, oh, is this good? And boss said, oh, yeah, go ahead. You know, it is it is a big shame, man. Like, now we're going to be stuck with Smith Lai's number one enemy, <laughs> Austin Aguavon. He's going to take, <laughs> he's going to take the, the team into his hands going into these two games. Uh, I mean, Smith Lai, take over. Like, Aguavon uh, is now going to be the interim coach. What's going to happen uh, from here? I, I just want to, like, uh, say something about uh, the tax law, you know. You know, I, 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 I only we know this thing. When they want to, when you want to do anything outside the country in the UK, you say your tax residence. You know, they might put that one there, your tax residence. You have to be able to sort that one out before anything, before can move forward. IoT, I can tell you that there's no agreement. It was just like a script. There was no agreement somewhere. There was nothing. It was just, there was nothing. There was nothing. You know, the script that I was trying to play was, you didn't just work out because that man, you know, said it earlier than them. So, you know, I won't tell you. You said that uh, they don't get shamed. See, you cannot shame someone that does not even care. No. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't shame someone that doesn't even care. So, the issue is this, you know, it, it's just a shame, you know, that uh, we find ourselves in this situation. Now, we're like, like a mockery of, uh, you know, West Africa, Togo, the Gay Republic, they're getting it right. But it's only Nigeria. Everything is difficult. So, you know, and you have mentioned that uh, I don't see him as my enemy. I just think that um, he's someone that uh, not offered anything good for Nigeria. You know, I don't think that um, he coached Nigeria several times and um, there was nothing, nothing came out of it. So, in my opinion, I don't think of Negravo is fit enough to be national team manager. You know, if somebody, if you, you have tried to buy goods twice, you failed. You, you, you were coached the under 17, you failed. You coached at 23, you failed. You are in the worst country. after all results that last time in a long time now. When yeah, the worst kind of sixteen. Yes, the worst have come right. results, and you are still coming back. And you are saying that uh, you know, some people are talking about you. They don't like you. Why? why, why I'm not going to like you Is because you, you are not. You are not doing well. Say, but people do not like you. They are your enemy. Who? I'm not going to like you because you're not doing well. So, in my own opinion, I think that uh, it's a different scenario again. We are already in trouble. I don't think uh, we can. It can get any lower again. This is actually was one of the lowest time in Nigerian football, I can tell you. Six months after AFCON final, look. I know. yes. That is. Yes. And, I mean, it, it's crazy. Um, I don't even know what to say. I don't have much faith in Osne Um, mm -hmm. I believe that this team still has enough quality to potentially beat, um, beat mm -hmm. Benin Republic and Rwanda. But are they going to go back and search for a coach after those two games because if i'm mm. not mistaken there's another international window in october yeah mm -hmm. so is a guavon just going to be the coach or are they going to find somebody else if a guavon wins one game and draw one it will stay at the i told you about it I, I, see, I i'll keep on posting that video i had with you it's a script <laughs> it's a script that play don't worry i'll keep on playing and i will tell you something here today again if this man they give this man this job. He will qualify Nigeria for the AFCON. But I will tell you that we are not going to the World Cup. They will sack him again before they have this AFCON. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I don't, I don't have access to the um, NFF's books. I don't know how much money they do or do not have. But it is a big shame that we cannot get things right. So it, is, it is a very, very big shame. You know, there um, was we used to even at least before be able to pretend like it was not the NFF picking the squad. But these guys had the audacity to drop a squad list eh? mm -hmm. and then put head coach Bruno <laughs> Labatia. Uh, yeah. I asked him that. He didn't reply to me. I just and asked him that. Said, he now tell us he not signed. Which means you have now confirmed to us all our suspicions we've always known. How can we now believe the next time you tell us that a coach actually selected a list and he really selected Ahmed Musa? All those times, General said, Ahmed Musa is our captain. We need him for the. Do, you, do we really believe now? Come mm. on. Man. It's sad. 
he said he said when he's in sorry situation like I have to be honest with you. Okay, somebody here asked a question. Um, I don't know if you have the answer to this. Um, mm -hmm. but they said, generally speaking, what is the employment contract basis of any coach hired? Um, in terms of is the coach an employee or is the coach an independent contractor? Do you know about that, Smith? So I uh, I think as far as the employee, you are an employee of the NFF. That is how the I think the NFF categorized you actually what employee of the NFF. So uh what's it called? The way they give you they give you contract as an actual what as an employee. No. So and I but under Pacero, I don't know what they gave Pacero, but previous foreign managers, I think uh, it's actually what that employee contract. All right, um, all right, all right. Um, let me see. Somebody's asking. Oh, somebody's asking, did NFF um did sign did he sign contracts before announcing him? No, he did not sign any contract before announcing him. They didn't show him terms and conditions. There's there's nothing. That's, that's why you see, even in their statement, they are saying that oh, we had an agreement in principle, you know, because um, BBC reported it shortly after he was announced that, say, hey, this man has not signed any contract. So agreement is not yet. It's just maybe, oh, do you want to be coach? Oh, yeah, I want to be coach. Okay. <laughs> Bruno Labadia is the new head coach. So there was definitely no agreement. You know, it wasn't as if the man had agreed to something, then turned his back. And, and again, also, some of the questions they're asking, if you don't sign a contract, you haven't signed a contract. I don't yeah, that, and again, that's the reality. I cannot come and announce tomorrow that, oh, because I had a meeting with these people today, oh, uh, Eagle Striker signed a partnership with Nike. Well, uh, no, it doesn't matter if you've had 20 meetings. Until the contract has been signed by both parties and is considered valid, you cannot make an announcement and say that something is done. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a big shame. I think they were like, um, was it Austin Okonakman or who was it? That said, they were probably just under pressure to announce something. Like, oh, people were asking the question wow. about who is the coach, who is the coach. They were probably just under pressure. And then they jumped the gun, and now it has come to, to, to bite them in the butt because it, it, it's, it's a really shameful one. But the coach definitely did not just, after, after agreeing, come and say, oh, no, I'm not doing anymore. You know, it, it just wasn't the case. Um, somebody says, can we have an investigative journalism on this disappointing backing out oh, oh. <laughs> by Bruno Labadia? I'm sure some of our journalists, you know, like Shino Kelly and the likes, I'm sure they will find out more about um, what, what happened. Um, Penny Henry says, the NFF needs to excessively communicate in words and voice, not in writing. The NFF presents is media shy and mute, uh, which I understand. is the same way when I reach out to certain Nigerian players, they tell me, no, they are not interested in talking. Not because they don't want to share that story, but because they cannot really speak. You know, they cannot really communicate. And I feel like our NFF president, if you put him under the spot too much and you start throwing questions at him, he might just, he might just break down. But <laughs> I, agree, I agree with what that person said because any competent organization, I don't care who you are, if you announce, if, if I hate using England because they will see I hate using big boys, Switzerland, Austria, you announce a manager, the first thing you do, you might draw a statement one day, give them one day to rest. The next thing you do straight away, they will, they will take a picture holding the kids and they will do a press conference. For people to come and ask questions. questions. Yeah, We don't do press conferences in anything. They can't even get like the backgrounds to even look like competent. <laughs> anyway, let me not get to that one. But <laughs> when you think about all these things, it's just like, what are we doing here? So you're now going to announce somebody, no contract has been signed, no information has been going on, and I was just here smiling and acting like it's normal. Like, it is not good enough. If you had like a press or a confirmed way where every time we have good access to the video, you know, we can see them in presence, we can ask questions. There is no way we will be in this predicament right now where they've announced a coach and three days later they've reneged. It's because Nigeria, they've suffered us so much. We've accepted their uselessness. They will drop lists. Do you remember the time they put Michael Ulisse on list? One time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or even the other day when they dropped the list, they don't spell the goalkeeper's name right. Yeah. Now they don't respect us now. Like, I'm sorry, they're taking the piss. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, Hybrid 10, it's probably an Arsenal fan, says, I think NFF would wink Nigerians. They never had the intention of hiring a foreign coach, which I support, but they had to be transparent. Honestly, Eguavon is the right person 
in these circumstances. Hmm. So the person the person says that he he doesn't want them to hire a Nigeria a foreign coach. He's saying he supports them not hiring a foreign coach, but that they should have been transparent with their intentions. And he also says he thinks Eguavon is the right person. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Eguavon is never the right person for Nigeria, you know. And I can remember historically, you know, when we are in this type of mess, we used to call on one person. It's late now. That's late coach Raiba Amodu, you know. He was, yeah, he was part of the 98, you know, he played two games, 98 World Cup qualification. He was part of the, he finished the 2002 World Cup qualification. That was the first one I watched, 2002, Agali. Yeah. yeah. Agali. And he also qualified Nigeria for the 2010 World Cup. We used to call him, but I have to be honest with you, either by luck or by, I don't well, know. Exactly. Yes, by luck or by competence. Mm-hmm. I think that um, Eguavon, though it was unlucky in 2005 when he didn't qualify for the World Cup, but Tonan, this last World Cup in Qatar, everything, he actually what, did it wrong. So for me, I, I think he's never the right man. I think he's uh, limited tactically. I think he's, um, he has failed anywhere. He, anywhere. he went to Black Leopard, he failed. You know, he went to Gumbe United, they relegated them. He went to Sunshine Stars, he failed. So I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's not the guy that is actually what uh, fit for this job. This national team job is not a particular, it's a particular appointment. Yeah, what are we doing here? My, someone says, can anyone blame Finidi? Finidi called up Tanimo, I'm sorry. For that alone, he's guilty. And we saw the way he played. Uh, no, don't defend Finidi, I beg. But the only thing I want to add here is the fact that that was even a question and someone asked that, okay, Eguavon is the best person for the job. Nigeria, we have to stop this thing, man. I'm begging us, man. Why are we always happy with just crumbs? Oh, they brought lights. Thank you, up Nepa. But in a lot of places in the world, if they take lights for five minutes, it will be a national emergency. Why are we accepting mediocrity all the time? Oh, see, I see, I is the best for the job. It's like, oh, take, just manage. Oh, just manage this. Uh, oh, let's just be okay with uh, nonsense. Why? See, look at what Smith like Smith like said. How many times ago have has failed? Me, I don't even remember all those. I remember the last, I remember this last half con that all of you want to put kill Maduka Okoye. You don't forgive Maduka Okoye, but he's he's a Guavon that is the best man for the job and he's not guilty. What are we doing here now? The same way the Siam that was banned by FIFA. How many Nigerians have seen try to oh, how's he going to get back into football? Why is he always the the crumbs that he wants to be happy with? I don't get it. It is that he don't want good for our country or the football team. The one thing that brings the whole country together. Always, oh, let's manage this uh, normal rubbish. I don't get it, man. Like, stop it, man. We should want better for ourselves. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. If the players now mess up, they will blame the players. Blame the players. They will abuse the Wobi, abuse the Wobi. You think he will be wants to go there and to, to be here that uh, it's Gusau eh, or Eguavon that is picking the players? And they tell them they should share room. They should train on one uh, small cut of grass like this. Uh, enter bus with no AC. What are we doing here now? Playing at a slim stadium. Oh. Uh, very, very serious stuff. Very serious stuff. Um, but yeah, I think we've kind of covered... We've kind of covered it, um, you know. Unfortunately, a situation that we find ourselves in. Let us see how things go in camp um, over these next few games. Um, we have a reporter that is going to be covering the Benin Republic, the home game for us. Um, so expect content on Eagle Striker on our, all our social media platforms, or most especially on YouTube. Hopefully, we're able to get you some interviews. We're able to get you probably if they have a press conference, we should cover that. Um, uh, interviews with some players, you know, and um, just nice engaging content from the game against Benin Republic. Um, but yeah, looking forward, you know, is it's hard to be hopeful given how things are being run and how things are being done. But I always say, like, for me, every hope that I have in the Super Eagles is because of the players that we have. It's not really because of the people that run the football or because of our coaching situation, because <laughs> coaching situation is never is never really clear what is is going on um but before the transfer rather before the international break of course nigerian players are going to be in action again um this weekend uh, let me just quickly touch on some games that sorry, maybe... sorry, I, I, 
Okay. Sorry, one sec, please. I don't know, maybe you, before we move on to Nigerian players, I, I think this IB return, uh, he mentioned something about, um, he challenged me. I don't know, maybe he want me to give a report about that. Okay, uh, me. let me see. He says, I respect your opinion, Smith. Like, I disagree that Ogwavo is incompetent. Have the NFF created a platform for sustainable success for the coaches they had? Okay, yeah, you can respond before I go. Okay, uh, let me just say something. Thank you for that comment. You know, NFF, NFA, they have been like this since the 80s. They have not created any opportunity for coaches to actually work to do well. You must be there, do your thing, naturally work, uh, try and perform. Eguavon made his debut for Nigeria in 1987-88. Mm -hmm. Eguavon played for Nigeria for 10 years. Eguavon understands the system. Mm -hmm. Eguavon will not, cannot come out and say that he has been treated well by Nigeria. He knows how the system works. Eguavon was part of the team that, uh, what's it called? It was, has been in Iran, you know, it was part of the team that went to try and for AFCON with Christian Shuku, you know, legend himself. What I'm saying basically is this. You understand the system. You know what the system actually was, wants. You must look for a way to thrive. I didn't mention this. Our highest defeat to Ghana in history, it was under a gravel in Brentford. They call it the Brentford Massacre. Ghana beat us 4 1 in 2007. They call it the Brentford Massacre. To tell you that this man is a bad news for Nigeria. And we should look for every avenue to resist this man. Very, 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 very strong words um, from Smith. Like, um, but before we go, I have a video clip to play for you guys before we go. Huh? Yes, I like his style of football. I do. It's a bit risky. It keeps you on the edge, but I like <laughs> <laughs> You know that, Diola? <laughs> That's the style of football. We expect that's the style of football that you expect from the Super Eagles. They play their friendlies. I was saying when they play the Afro qualifiers against BD and uh, Rwanda, mm -hmm. <laughs> they are style. Uh, but yes, thank you very much to everyone that has engaged with us tonight. Um, thank yeah. you very much for staying up, guys. Um, Olu and Smith, I appreciate you guys as always.